Yeah. So um, uh, let's see. We've got people that have been on all morning. Um, and we have Doreen, who's going to be our presenter. Why don't we just do a very quick intro for those of us who are on the call, and then we'll uh, turn it over to Doreen. So, Betty, do you want to start? Yes, I'm uh, Betty Young, and I'm with Rockwell Rotary. been a member of about four or five years, and I'm in charge of membership for the coming year. We'll be president in about two years. Excellent. Thank you. And Todd? Yes, I'm Clovis High Plains Rotary. Uh, Club Service Chair, Past President. Thank you. Ronnie? Hi. i um, going to be the president for the Las Cruces Rio Grande Club on July 1st. Excellent. And we all know Kathy. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, as a reminder, this is being recorded. and We'll uh, send out the YouTube link. Uh, later today or tomorrow, and we'll also send you out a survey on how this went. I'm going to turn it over to Doreen, and then I'm going to go on mute so I can help someone else log in. So I'll be on mute for a few minutes. Doreen, you're okay? Yes. Can you All see right. me now? Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to um, share my um, screen, and hopefully all of this works. Can everyone see the um, presentation okay? Yes. Okay, wonderful. All right, well, uh, I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to talk a little bit about international service. And uh, I'll talk, I'll start with uh, what is international service? Um, obviously, it's one of the five avenues of service that a well-rounded Rotary Club would engage in. And the elevator speech that I like to use is this, international service encompasses actions taken to expand Rotary's humanitarian reach around the world and promote world understanding and peace. So I think that's a, a pretty good definition of what it is. Uh, sharing a little bit about the characteristics of international service as I see it, I think it expands well beyond just doing global grants or, um, or big projects overseas. Um, it's really any activity that brings two or more clubs together from different countries. It can involve a project, but it can be as simple as hosting a couple that are participating in a group friendship exchange or hosting a, um, a youth exchange student or taking them on a weekend trip. All of those are part of international service. International service expands beyond Rotary. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity to involve other organizations, partnering with Rotary to address needs. And one thing that I've noticed, and I think it's a change for the better, is over the 20 years that I've been involved with Rotary, you know, in the past, you had to sort of keep it a secret if you belonged to any other organizations. Um, I was simultaneously, I'm going to confess now, a, a member for a few years of Lions and Rotary, and we partnered together on a lot of incredible projects. Um, but I had people actually come up to me after meetings and say, well, you, you better not let other people know that you're, you belong to another organization. They might kick you out of Rotary. <laughs> so fortunately, that doesn't happen anymore. There's so many opportunities to partner with non-governmental organizations, um, other service organizations. Um, really, we all want the same thing. We want to alleviate suffering and we want to bring peace to the world. And then probably most importantly, I think, is that this concept of international service, we are after all Rotary International, um, is that it distinguishes Rotary among service organizations. Uh, I'm professionally, I'm a marketer. Uh, I'm a marketer and a banker, and one of the most important competitive principles is to have some way to distinguish yourself. So why would somebody want to join Rotary instead of maybe another organization? Well, if you want to work on a global basis and be actively engaged in, in building a more peaceful world, then Rotary is the service club for you. 
I'm going to pause here to see if anybody else has any comments or if you want to share um, any questions or, or concerns or experiences. Okay, we'll go ahead then on the next slide. So getting acquainted with people from other countries and starting to learn about their cultures and all of the different aspects of international service, I think is the important first step. And again, we have a lot of opportunities within Rotary to do this. Um, my personal experience is that I didn't know anything about the rest of the world. I mean, 20 years ago, the world was a bigger place. People didn't travel to China every year or Korea or South America, you know, and when I was growing up, I don't think anybody I knew even got on a plane until we were 18 years old. So in 20 years, in the 100 years or so plus that Rotary's been around, this has changed so much. Um, so the way that I got passionate about international service is I started meeting a lot of people through Rotary from other countries. And that's what really sort of stoked the flame that keeps that passion alive in me to do international service. So attend an international convention. Even if you're attending one in the United States and it's in Atlanta next year, you're going to meet a lot of people from other countries. So you don't have to travel far to have those experiences. You can nominate a Peace Fellow, um, participate as a, as a traveler or a host in group friendship exchange. Um, if you do get to go to another country, then, um, okay, is John Whitler on the call? Somebody's requesting remote control of my shared content. Is that okay, Jeff? Do I say yes or no? You're on mute, Jeff. Um, I'm not sure why he's requesting. John is on. Okay. He get his, his phone hooked up, but I'm not sure. Why, so, so basically they're requesting to share, to, to have you stop sharing? No, he's requesting remote control of my shared content. I would say I'd want to decline that, wouldn't I? I would decline that. Okay, all right. All right, so um, if you do have an opportunity to travel to another country, I just happened to be in um, Bangladesh one time when they were doing a National Immunization Day and they asked me if I wanted to join in, and I, I did. And it was both wonderful and terrifying at the same time. It was terrifying because I was afraid I didn't, if I didn't do the drops just right, that kid was going to get polio for sure. So, <laughs> But it, it was a wonderful experience. Um, you can join a Rotarian Action Group. I know in, in, within our district, we have a lot of members of these groups. The three that I'm most familiar with are, uh, is, the, is Wash Rag is one, the Water and Sanitation Rotarian Action Group, and uh, the Microfinance and Development one is another. Uh, and then the, the one on uh, population, and I can't recall the other part of that, but those are just three, there are many more. You can form your own action group, you can visit a project fair, we have our bi-district conference, that's a project fair. Any uh, comments or questions at this point? Has uh, anyone else had the opportunity to do any of these things? Yes, this is Ronnie. Um, we went to England on an RFE last year, which was great. Um, and then this year we're gonna be hosting a couple from uh, Milan, Italy. Okay. So that, that I found very interesting, and even to know that there are clubs in Europe that don't allow women, which is something <laughs> that I found very interesting. Um, yeah. And I'm wondering what century we were in, but at any rate, it was a great experience, just wonderful. Well, good. And, uh, yeah, so I'm hoping once I get out of being a counselor for a youth exchange that I can indeed host a student, but I've been a counselor for Youth Exchange and for Ryla for about seven years, so keeps me oh, pretty busy. Yeah. Great. All yeah. right. Thanks for sharing that. Does anyone else want to share an experience? Doreen, if I could put a plug in for uh, by district and, and the yeah. office. I don't remember the specific dates, but uh, El Paso this year and 
uh, I, my first spy district was just a couple of summers ago, and it was it was like, wow, this is so cool. This is what Rotary International is all about. And so just to um, see the many projects that our uh, our Rotary clubs are involved in, um, and to partner with folks uh, from uh, uh, the district in uh, Mexico was it was just very cool. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I highly recommend anyone to participate and, and just come and check it out. Yes, I'll second that. I've been to two of them. I'm going to miss this year because I'll be out of town, but it's definitely a, a good uh, opportunity to go and find out about projects and, and our partners in Mexico. Okay. All right, so my slides. I'm wondering if somebody has taken control of my slide. Um, because it won't advance now. Um, one second. Okay. Um, I don't know if this is, we're still trying to get John in, but I don't know why it's having an effect on your slides, Doreen. Okay. Well, it, I'm able to advance now. So whatever it was, um, is working. So, okay, thanks. um, these are just a couple of, um, Rotarian action group examples. I won't read them to you, but, um, those are just examples of how action groups can partner with you and your clubs on international service projects. Uh, one thing I want to say before you get involved in international service is to reach some sort of consensus with your club members and your board on the level of involvement and whether you want to start out strictly by contributing to another project um, financially or with skills. Um, or if you want to do a hands-on project. And I would also recommend that you do this gradually, you know, start out partnering with another club to learn the ropes and before you try to do a hands-on project all by yourself. I've been a member of three Rotary Clubs and I've been involved with many others over the years. And sometimes you encounter a scarcity complex where people say we can't do international service projects because the need is too great in our local community. And it can be a constant struggle to sort of keep people engaged in the idea that we have five avenues of service and not four. So one thing that I did that I found was helpful is at the beginning, you know, I've been a president three different times now. And um, going back to my earliest days as a president, um, I, did a budget before I took office and we showed, we broke it out. It was a small club. We only had about 15, 19 members and our fundraiser brought in about nine or 10,000 a year, but we budgeted that $10,000. We showed proportionately how much we were supporting the local community and how much we um, were supporting international service. And that seemed to sort of calm everyone's fears that we weren't going to give it all away to other countries. So very important before you start is to, to build that consensus. Um, attend local area and district meetings. Again, I'll put a plug in for by district. Uh, if you haven't ever done a project before, there are a lot of clubs that are always looking for partners. So you have many opportunities to learn from them and decide how you wanna go from there. Um, Rotary has wonderful tools today. Um, Rotary Showcase, is mostly for publicizing your projects. The one where you look for help is, is new. It's Rotary's new crowdsourcing tool. Has anybody um, explored that? Does anybody else um, know about that? Okay, well, I'm, I'm so excited to share this with you. So what it is, they call it crowdsourcing because it's more than just crowd it's funding. So crowdfunding, you're probably familiar with some of the different sites. Um, I'm drawing a blank on what they're called. GoFundMe, I think, is one. Is that the name? Yes. Okay. So it's a similar concept, except in this case, you're sourcing in four different areas. You're sourcing for funding, volunteers, materials, and partners. And you're not just sourcing from within Rotary. It lets you go to the whole wide world. So once you set up your project, you can share it on Facebook. Um, people can fund your project using PayPal. Um, you can literally engage the whole world in supporting your project. Uh, there's a tutorial 
on the Rotary website. Uh, if anybody wants the link, I can send it to you after the meeting. So it lets you post a project or contribute resources to another project. And people can sign in three different ways. You can sign in from my Rotary, or you can sign in from Google or Facebook, which is especially helpful if you're not a Rotarian. When you start a project, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to choose your partners <coughs> carefully. I, I was a Rotary Foundation chair um, for two different terms, and I can tell you a lot of horror stories about clubs that didn't pick their partners carefully. Um, one club got hooked up with a club in Africa somewhere, uh, and they didn't know their partners very well, and they did a $30,000 project. It was to ship books to this community for a library, and there was some level of corruption with the partners where they held the books for ransom and kept telling the host, the international club, that they needed more money for this customs thing, for this form, for this fee, et cetera, et cetera. And the club pumped another $10,000 into this thing, trying to get them through. Well, those books never made it to the Rotary Club. And the club was out $40,000. They had to pay back the foundation grant, too. So that's why it's so important to really know who you're working with. Um, and if your partner doesn't turn in the, the report on time, you're not going to be able to do any future projects that involve Rotary grants. The needs assessment is pretty important. Um, whether you're using a global grant or not, you really want to know what the community needs. In my past experience, I've encountered a lot of people that come up with solutions and then go looking for needs. And, and that's part of maybe our Western perspective on things that, you know, because we're so sophisticated and we're such a wealthy country that we have all the answers. So you really need to kind of remove yourself from that perspective and really let the community tell you what they think they need most and be very neutral about cultural differences. You're going to, if, when you go to another country, especially a developing country for the first time, you're just going to be overwhelmed by how different it is. And, you know, initially you can be sort of judgmental and question why people are doing things that way, but you'll have a better experience and you'll learn a lot more if you just keep an open mind and you realize that, hey, people in developing countries are extremely resourceful and they come up with incredible ways to, to solve their problems. I'll just give you a, a really quick example. Um, in our country, you know, if, if a woman needs to figure out if she has cervical cancer, it's a relatively simple test, but it's expensive in a developing country to do that same test. So the lay people there can tell with like a vinegar wash or something. I mean, it's crazy, but this thing works. They can tell in 90% of the cases if somebody has cancer. Now, in our country, we'd say, well, that's not good. You're going to miss 10% of the cases. But if you can reach millions of people that you otherwise wouldn't reach because it's too expensive, then, you know, why wouldn't you do this other practical approach? And it's the same with um, a lot of the um, maternal mortality and infant mortality outcomes, too. They're going to do things differently than we would but they're gonna reach a lot more people and they, they really know how to, to get things done with very little money and resources. Um, plan for sustainability. Uh, this, it, I'm not gonna get into this deeply because this is more of a grant issue, but the general concept is still really important. Sustainability means is this project gonna be able to continue once you leave? Um, or, or is it gonna fall apart after you leave and nobody knows how to fix it or maybe the community hasn't bought in and they're just going to let it go to waste. So in the past, before Rotary focused on this sustainability um, aspect, probably three quarters of the projects that were done were not in existence in three years. So that's very important. Um, assign responsibilities. Before you start a project, decide, you know, who's going to procure the supplies, who's going to write the report, what volunteers are going to do what, who's going to do the publicity. Um, 
within your own club and with your partner clubs, you need to know that ahead of time. And then plan your budget and fundraising. There are so many ways beyond Rotary grants to fund your project. Um, corporate donations, not just in our country, but in many developing countries, when a government lets um, a large company come in, like in, in Southeast Asia, um, Singer is a big company. Well, for them to be able to operate in that country, they have to give a certain amount of money to social welfare activities. So big corporations are a great source for funding. Government and foundation grants beyond just the Rotary Foundation. Um, I mentioned crowdfunding and crowdsourcing contributions from other Rotary Clubs, and don't overlook grants from other service organizations. I was involved in a cataract surgery project in developing countries, and we partnered with Lions Club because their focus is on eyesight, no pun intended, um, but they wrote a grant, and we wrote a grant with Rotary Foundation, and between the two of us, we raised $60,000, where we would have only had 30 otherwise. You have a lot of expert resources. You know, a lot of the projects I've done are medical, and you really wouldn't want me operating on anybody. So, <laughs> of course, I have to seek out um, experts to do um, labor and delivery, to do um, education and literacy, to do cataract surgeries, whatever that project is. You need to have expert resources, and all of these um, entities are going to be you know, abundantly helpful to you. Rotary Community Corps is something that I'm not extremely familiar with, but what it is are professionals that want to lend their expertise in vocational service, but they aren't Rotarians. And uh, they do a lot of local service projects, but they can also be very helpful in international service projects as well. Um, any questions at this point? Has anyone had any success partnering with some of these other organizations? No, no. Okay. Well, Doreen, uh, you probably heard about Norm Arnold's work with Bridges to Prosperity, uh, and so he's been very, he and Robin French have been very active with that, and, uh, um, and well, we'll be going back to Nicaragua then, I think, uh, later on this fall, so. Uh, okay. They've been, a, they've been a great organization to work with, and, uh, so, Good. thankfully, no, no $40,000 uh, that we're having to pay back to uh, uh, the Rotary Foundation. Okay. And, and I'll add that I have never engaged in a major international service project. I'm talking about anything with a budget of 30000 or more without having a partner on the ground in the form of a NGO, non-governmental organization. You really have to have that. If you don't have somebody that is part of that community, um, knows how to leverage resources in these other countries. It really is going to be a struggle. Mm -hmm. um, transparency and stewardship. This is really my favorite part. <laughs> and I'll share with you a project that, that one of my clubs did that is the absolute best example of everything you can possibly do wrong in this area. So, um, not everything goes right, and we learn the most from our mistakes, but um, disclosing all potential conflicts of interest. This is important. It doesn't mean that if there is a potential conflict of interest that you can't do it. The only thing that you can't do is you can't have project committee members that serve in an executive capacity or an officer on a board of a cooperating or benefiting organization as part of your project committee. That's the one thing you can't do if Rotary funds are involved. Now, other conflicts of interest might take the form of, um, let's say I am, I'm doing a medical project somewhere and I'm going to supply all the medical equipment. Well, that's potentially a conflict of interest. Now, it might not be if you're donating it. But if you're going to sell it for a profit and you're going to cut out local suppliers, then it definitely would be. So those are some examples of how you want to address potential conflicts of interest. Rotary says you need to disclose them, but they aren't necessarily going to prohibit it. You have to keep project funds separate. Maintain a dedicated account so that you have the ability to do that easily. 
humanitarian supplies have to be purchased by Rotary. You can't write a check to the cooperating organization. And you can change your budget a little bit. Let's say that somebody donated um, some equipment that you needed for surgery. So you want to take that out of the budget and buy a microscope instead. Well, Rotary will let you do that, but you have to ask them before you buy it. So those are all things you need to do. Now, um, I'll share the quick story of the worst example of how you cannot do these things. Project was to establish a factory in Kenya that built water filters. And the Rotarian that was kind of the champion for this had his own nonprofit organization. And without the rest of us knowing, he told our club treasurer to write the check to his foundation. And he didn't share that, and our treasurer didn't know any better. And she just did this, not Rotary Del Sol, I'll share this, this is a different Rotary Club. So, um, so then when I started investigating, when I found out that this had happened, and I was searching on the internet, I realized that he was publicizing this entire project as a project of his organization. And there was no financial accounting. Um, the, the whole thing ended up being a disaster. And fortunately, we were able to work with the Rotary Foundation to, um, to get the reporting done. They're, they're very forgiving if you cooperate with them. But take my advice and don't do it that way make transparency and stewardship a priority before you even start. Um, the areas of focus um, are part of foundation grants, but I think they provide a good framework for deciding what Rotary's priorities are gonna be. And I can see I'm gonna run out of time, so I can't go into the history of why these areas of focus came about but they will just give you the short version and say that at one point in time, Rotary realized it was trying to be all things to all people and they had to prioritize. And to me, this is a brilliant way to prioritize it. It, it takes on a holistic approach. It addresses all the aspects of what a community needs in order to thrive. And you really can't have one without the other. Public relations, um, really important for people to showcase what you've done. Um, it brings a high profile to Rotary. It helps us with fundraising. It helps us with membership. It just, you know, why do a project and keep it a secret? So these are all different methods you can use to share your project. Um, the Rotary Showcase is great. It can automatically link to Facebook, so you can take it outside of the Rotary world. Um, Rotary staff monitor projects in the showcase, and if they see a good one, they'll put that on their landing page for 30 days. So there's more publicity for your club, and, and pride keeps your members engaged. Um, we're all getting better at social media, and Rotary tools help, help us with that a lot. Um, press releases, plaques, um, just make sure you follow the Rotary guidelines for visual identity and um, presentations to other clubs and organizations. Talking about your project with another club during its program benefits you and the other club, and that's another form of international service. And then additional resources, these are just a few. Rotary um, just has abundance of resources to help you. So if anyone wants this um, PowerPoint, I can send it out to you or I can make it available to Jeff to share. Um, you can use the use the the document to look up these other resources okay um jeff how did i do i, I felt like i was rushing <laughs> you did perfect um, <laughs> any uh last minute questions for doreen yes i have one but i don't have a question thank you doreen for doing this it's very interesting i would like to have this so if you can send it to jeff and then he can send it out to us that would be great okay. i like this all right, I'll send you. it out with the uh, survey links. Okay, super, super. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. All thank right. Well, you, thank Doreen, you. that was great. Okay, thank you. I appreciate your nice words. Mm -hmm. well, thank you, everyone. And again, you'll you'll get a survey. And some of you who've been on each of these, you'll get four surveys because we're going <laughs> to send one for each group. But um, we do need your feedback. This is new. 
Uh, there were a couple people that were having technology issues. That's uh, unfortunate, but it's kind of inevitable. The main thing is just, just try to learn and make sure that we um, that this will work for us. So with that, have a great rest of your Saturday. I'll also send you out the, um, the YouTube links once they're uploaded. That'll probably be tomorrow. Um, with that, have a great rest of your Saturday. Thank you all. Thank you, Jeff.